We're going to be going over the basic GraphQL types and how type definitions work in general. So before we do that, I wanted to mention that you may be noticing how mine is colorful right here, this string or the type definitions and has syntax highlighting. So this is a VS Code extension that's doing that. This is called GraphQL for VS Code. You can grab that and install it if you want a similar thing. Uh, the other thing is we're going to be making a lot of changes to this file today and we want to see the changes reflected and we don't want to restart the server every time so we're going to install a package to handle that for us so we're going to say yarn add as a dev dependency no daemon and what this does and when we run it is it's going to listen to this file and every time we make a change it's going to restart our server so we're going to go into package.json now and i'm just going to add a script for it And we're going to say just our index.js file. So now when I say uh, run this start script, yarn start, it's going to go ahead and listen for this file and uh, restart our server when we make a change. So if I get rid of the exclamation point, you can see it starts up again. All right, so let's start talking about the type definitions here. So the first thing that I wanted to mention with this is uh, it's going to check the types of stuff. So for example, hello here, we said that it returns a string. So if we don't return a string, it's going to get mad at us. Um, or it's going to try uh, casting the type to a string. So for example, let's say we do 5 here. Um, and then we can come over to our GraphQL Playground to try it out. And you're going to notice 5 is going to get cast to a string. Um, but what if it can't be cast to the data type? So for example, we have hello world here. And let's say we want to return an integer from this instead. Uh, and then we can try running this, and we're going to notice that GraphQL checked it, and you can actually not cast a hello world to an integer, so it's going to get mad at us. So you're going to get exactly what you expect to get back from the GraphQL server, or it's going to error out because you returned the wrong stuff from your resolvers over here. The other thing is we have an exclamation point here, which means that it cannot be null. Um, so if you got rid of that, all right, so here I'm going to say, or if we kept this and we got rid of the null here, um, it's going to get mad at us because we're returning null. Cannot return null for non-nullable field. So that's a common thing you'll see. So it's good to know why you're getting that error. Um, but if I got rid of this exclamation point, it's okay that this returns null. All right, so now it's happy with us and we can return null there. So that's kind of the first thing is anything you put in your type definitions, GraphQL is going to check the type of it, or at least it's going to try casting it to that type. And the other thing with this is I wanted to go over this type query because this is kind of a special type. So everything you put in here is going to be uh, queryable, or at least that's the idea of it. There's this other type called a mutation. And the idea with this is you probably have heard of CRUD. So uh, what that means, it stands for kind of the basic operations you'll do in a web server. You'll either create stuff, you'll read stuff, update stuff, or delete stuff. So in this case, uh, usually in this query type here, we're going to put everything that is queryable or that you read. And then if you create something, update something, or delete something, you put in the mutation. So we are either uh, pretty much mutating the server or the database in some way. So that's why it's called a mutation. Um, and so here, like for example, this, for example, we may register a user, right? So we can say register, um, and we can say what we were going to return from this, for example, a user. So we kind of talked about how you can return strings and whatnot, uh, but there's all kinds of custom types you can create. And I wanted to just go over a quick cheat sheet that I used to use when I was first learning GraphQL that I found pretty handy. And these are some of the things that we're going to go over, some of the basic types, but then there's a lot of other things you can do that you occasionally use. So I'll link this below, uh, but these are the main types that you're going to be using or the built-in types. So integers, floats, strings, booleans, and an ID. And then you can kind of create your own types, which we're about to create. So for example here, when I register, I'm creating a user, so I want to return a user back. So here we can say type user, or we're returning a type user. Now we haven't actually created it yet, but we can add it in this outer scope here. So I'm going to say type user, and then here's where I put all the fields that the user has. So for example, it may have an ID, and here we're going to return the ID type, and I'm going to say it cannot be null. And 
the ID type, what that is, is it can be a string or an integer because um, you may have like a UUID, for example, as the ID, or you might have a number, one, two, three, or whatever. Uh, and this is used actually with Apollo on the front end for the client uh, for the cache. But you don't really have to worry about right, this right now, but just know that's what it's used for is the cache. Um, and there may be some other use cases, but that's the top one that comes to mind. Um, and for example, we may have a username, which is a string. Um, and maybe we have a password, maybe we don't. Maybe we just keep these two fields for now. Um, and so this is the user that we're going to return. And so here, I'm going to say comma mutation. And we're going to have uh, register be here. And here we're going to return this user type. All right, so here I'm going to return an ID, which we're going to say one in a username as Bob. So now when we register, we're going to get this user back. Now this is not exactly a good example of what register does in the resolver over here. This is kind of just a dummy resolver right now. Uh, but this would be a good example of what you would put in a mutation is a register. So now we can come over here and now we want to call this reg or this register mutation. So you may think we just say register here uh, and then we run it. Uh, but we're going to get some errors about this. So first it says we cannot query the field register. So remember how I said that query was implied here? Um, so this is actually under the mutation, so we need to say mutation there, right? So because it has type mutation, we have to put that there. And because this is under type query, we can do that there. The other thing is register returns a object. And so one of the cool things about GraphQL is you can select the fields that you actually get back from an object. So here we're going to say register. And I can actually get the fields back um, by putting curly braces, and I can specify what I get. Now, if we take a look at our schema over here, we would usually see register. Um, we don't see it here, and the reason for that is we just haven't refreshed. So if we go ahead and click this, it'll refetch the data, and we can see there's now a register here. The other cool thing about GraphQL Playground is it's going to actually autocomplete for us. So for example, I don't, I need, I don't know what I want to put here, right? We, you may not know. You may not know the server. Uh, so the cool thing about GraphQL is you can use this schema thing over here to know what to do. So when you have object types, it's a lot more helpful. So I can go ahead and click this here, and I can actually see I, the type user here has an ID and a username field. So I can type that here, and you'll notice it also auto-completes for me here as well. And if this prompt doesn't come up for you, I believe it's control space, yeah, and then I'll bring up the types. Um, and then we're going to fetch that user that I talked about, and we can see the shape of it here. Uh, so that's the one cool thing about GraphQL is I don't even need to know how you built it. Uh, a front-end engineer can just come over to GraphQL Playground and look through the schema documentation here and know exactly how to call your GraphQL server and what they should get back from it. The other thing is you get to pick what types you get back or what fields you get back. So for example, here I said ID and username, and we got both of those back. But for example, what if I just want the ID back? That's totally fine and we only get the ID back. Same thing, we can just say we want the username back. So you can see this would be really helpful if we have a ton of fields, and if some of the fields are more expensive than others to actually fetch the data for, we can just not fetch them. And we're gonna talk more about how that kind of works with the resolvers in the next video, uh, but just know that it's possible. Um, so that's kind of with the fetching stuff. So we have our register mutation there, and we kind of just went over a basic object type here, right, a user. Now you may want to return more than just a, a user here. So for example, uh, usually I might say a register response is what I would call it sometimes. And in here I'm going to return everything that I want to return from this mutation. Um, and again, here I said possibly this could return null. So maybe I want to make this I always return something. So here I may want to return a user. And here you'll notice I'm putting a, I'm using the user type here, so you can actually have it nested, right? And again here, I wanna make sure that I get a user back. Maybe I wanna return maybe sometimes null though. Uh, and maybe I wanna do errors. So this is a common thing that I'll do, and I'll create a type called error. And uh, I'll say like field, which is a string, and I'll create a message, which is a string. So now with my error type here, I might get more than one error. So I actually want to turn an array of errors here. So we're going to say error, and you can wrap it with a brackets right here. And that's how you say that this is going to return an array. 
So now what we can do is I can come over here and I can say user and we're going to say errors and it's going to have you an array here and it's going to be an array of objects and it can be an array of errors. So for example, we're going to say field username and message bad. Um, and then we can try just fetching this and you'll notice as soon as I refresh this, uh, it's going to be mad at me with my selection here. And if we look at our docs, we can notice, hey, there's more fields added now. So I can say errors and users, and we can see it's still mad at us. So let's take a look. We can click on this. We can see errors has a sub selection too. So each object, you actually need to tell it what fields that you want. So field, message, and our user here, we want ID and username. So we're grabbing everything. Um, and we can grab all these fields like this. Um, the other cool thing about this is again, we can just ignore this entire type if we want to. I just don't care about errors, right? And we just don't grab them. Uh, the other thing is this is gonna affect all the fields, uh, all the fields you get back in the array. So what I mean by that is let's say we have two items in the array. And I don't know, we'll just put two on everything. And we try refreshing this, right? So we have two things now. So for example, if I don't want the field, that's gonna remove it from every item in the array. Right, so now we're just getting the message back for everything. And again, doesn't matter which one you pick, you pick any fields you want. So that's super handy. Uh, the other thing is I wanna talk about kinda of how the uh, the types are working here, so with this. So uh, you notice I put no exclamation points there. Uh, so what that means is I can actually return null here. And it's gonna to be totally fine with that. Right, so this is gonna be null now. And it doesn't complain because we know it can return null there. Uh, the other thing is, let's say you don't want it to return, be able to return null. We had an exclamation point there. And it's it's gonna be good now. Or it's not gonna be good now, it's gonna tell us that there's something wrong, right? And then there's one other place you can actually add an exclamation point with arrays. So for example here, I can include null in my list and it's gonna to be totally happy with me. But for, Sam, for example, if you don't want to uh, allow null in the list, that's a pretty common thing. Uh, we can get rid of that by putting an exclamation point there and that's gonna make sure that all the error, errors are not null. All right, so it's gonna complain about this now. And we're gonna get that common error cannot return null for non-null fields. So those are arrays. So you can have an arrays of any type. So we use an array of objects. The objects type is error. This could be a string, could be an integer. You can choose what you like. Um, and I think the last thing that I wanna go over is arguments. So for example, uh, in our register here, field here, we really want to just like take a username and maybe a password as parameters. Uh, so we can do this by putting uh, parentheses here and I can say username and then I specify the, also the type of the arguments that I expect to get from the user. So that's kind of interesting. So here I can say I expect a string and it's mandatory and a password that's mandatory too. Uh, and maybe I, you can also give me an age and that's gonna be an integer and that's just uh, sometimes required. Um, so I'm gonna create a new tab over here. We're gonna create a mutation and we're gonna say register and let's go ahead and click that so we can get some auto completion here. Uh, and this is kind of how you call that. So parentheses, and now we can pass in our arguments and password. And let's just, we, we can just not include the age and that's gonna be totally fine. And we can make that pretty, right? So this is a valid mutation here. We pass in a username and password and it's gonna get mad right if we don't include this because we said a password has to be required so we can actually dictate how we expect you to call it and i can see what that looks like in the schema here i can click on my register and i know for a fact these are the fields that i have to pass in so it's going to tell me exactly what it expects too um, the other thing with this is for example i might want to do a login um, and maybe my login is very similar so i'm going to say login and for now, we're just going to return null to keep it simple. So here, I'm just going to say int and or let's do a boolean, true or false. 
and I'm going to say it's required, and I'll return true from it. So here you see I'm duplicating fields. So maybe you'd want to put this in something that you can use multiple times. So you might think that you can create an object type and use that in multiple places, but that's one thing that uh, I learned pretty quickly you can't do in GraphQL. So if you want to do an argument type or argument object, they're called inputs. So we're gonna say input, and we're gonna say uh, user info, for example, could be what we call it. And this works like an object. We can give it fields. So I can give it these three fields. Um, I'm going to get rid of the commas there. And now I can use that for my register. So I can say user info is equal to the type user info. So what does that look like? So now if I refresh this over here, it's going to get mad at me because it expects me to pass in an object, user info. And now it's happy with us and it works. And again, I can figure out exactly what I need to call by looking at the schema over here and checking what the types expect. Um, and then this is where I can now reuse this. And so that's going to be pretty handy to be able to reuse this across different mutations. And also you may like just having it in an object um, that can sometimes be handy uh, passing that. So it's good to know you can pass in inputs like that. And then there's one other thing that I wanted to mention. So we only have one field in our query up here, but we can actually have, usually there's gonna be multiple queries, multiple stuff you have in your mutations because you might have a lot of stuff, right? So for example here, we may wanna return a user and get a user from here. So uh, let's grab one. And I'm just gonna copy what we have down here. So let's grab a new tab and I'm going to say hello and I'm also going to say, let's refresh this, also going to say user. So what I wanted to show you is you can fetch multiple queries at the same time and it's going to combine them together. And we can see again, the shape matches what we expect based on what's over here. Um, so that's, that's kind of cool. The other thing is this runs in parallel queries run in parallel, so these two are going to run um, like that, whereas mutations, you can do the same thing. So I could call register and I can call login, right? And let's see, what am I doing wrong? Oh, it just returns a boolean, so we can get rid of that. And now the difference between mutations is they run um, in order, so it's going to run register first, then it's going to run login. Uh, so that's an important tip for seeing mutations and queries as well. Um, but there you go. That's kind of a basic introduction to type definitions and some of the types that you can add here. The idea is you pretty much expose what you want to expose here, um, and you can put the types for what's being exposed. So you tell it what's going to come back, and GraphQL is going to get mad at you if you don't return those types. And again, I'll link this below, but this is a super handy guide where you can kind of see all the different types that you can pass in. And here's going to tell you all the different ways you can do null and stuff, so you can remember that. Um, and then there's some another just kind of small things that are really helpful, for example, default values and other stuff that you can take a look at here.